Hey guys, as many of you know, I have a Pi hole running on a Raspberry Pi here on my home network. And unfortunately, today the worst has happened. I was doing something else with the Raspberry Pi and I ruined the config for the Pi hole. Fortunately, though, I take good backups of the settings of the Pi hole, so today we're going to do a clean install of Pi hole and restore from that backup. So the first thing that we're going to need to do here is reinstall the Pi hole application. We can do that by logging into the Raspberry Pi command line interface and then running the following single line command, which has provided the Pi the Pi hole team to take care of the full installation for you. So this command does do something slightly controversial, which is it pipes to bash. The piping to bash is kind of controversial because it prevents you from reading the code that is about to run on your Raspberry Pi. I'm okay with doing that in this instance because I trust the developers of the Pi hole. I've run the software before and I'm confident that it's not going to do anything particularly malicious. Once you've run that command, the script itself is going to start looking, uh, doing a couple of quality checks, including uh, making sure that you're a root user and you've got sudo, and then it's gonna go ahead and start taking care of the installation for us. That's gonna take a little while, so we'll be back whenever it's completed. And through the power of YouTube editing, we can jump ahead to the first couple of selection screens. So the installer is going to prompt you with a couple of warnings and selection screens. It's completely okay to choose the default for a number of these settings. So we'll just go ahead and hit enter here for okay and then enter again and then it's going to warn us that we need a static IP assigned to the Pi hole uh, or to the Raspberry Pi in order to get it to work consistently. We've already done that. We've assigned a static IP address in our router. If you haven't done that, go ahead and do that now. But I have, so I'm going to say yes and continue on. And now we're being asked to select an upstream DNS provider. If you don't know what that is, don't worry too much about it. You can go ahead and just select Google or OpenDNS or any of the options here on the list. And then we're being asked to select a third party list in order to start blocking ads. If this is your first time install of a Pi hole, you can go ahead and leave this selected. However, I have an ad list that I'm going to be restoring from. So I'm going to unselect this option and then hit OK. Uh, and then it's going to ask us about the protocols that we want to block. Again, the default selections here for both IPv4 and IPv6 are perfect. We can just hit enter. And finally, it's going to prompt us to confirm that the current network settings are what we want to use as a static IP address. I'm perfectly OK with those, so I'm going to select yes. And then the Pi hole tries to be helpful by warning us about IP conflicts. Once again, we can hit enter. And then it's going to ask us about the web admin interface. We do want to install the web admin interface, so we're just going to leave the default selection off on and hit enter. And then it's going to prompt us again to install a web server like TPD in this case. Once again, the recommendation is on. I'm going to be using that, so I'm going to just leave the default and select OK. And then it's going to ask us if we want to log queries. Yes, I want to run logging. And when I hit enter, it's going to ask me at what level I want to run the logging. Again, I'm perfectly happy to log absolutely everything. The default is perfect here. So I'm just going to press enter. And once again, the installer is going to go through and do a lot more installation. So we're going to let it run away in the background until through the power of editing, we can skip straight to the end. Now the installation is complete. And if we go and visit the IP address forward slash admin that we assigned to the Raspberry Pi, we'll get prompted with the Pi hole interface. Now it's asking us to enter a password and that password is in fact available in the installer here. We can see near the very end, the Pi hole uh, admin interface, the command line uh, installer is pr prompting us with a web interface password. Now, once we, we can actually use this to log into the Pi hole itself, but I, I'm not interested in doing that. The, my home network is locked down and I don't think that I need to assign a password to this particular device. So what we could do here instead is just use the command Pi hole, oops, Pi hole uh, hyphen A and then hyphen P. And that will ask us to uh, set a new password for the, the Raspberry or the Pi hole. So we can set it to blank for no password. I'm just going to hit enter and do that. And then when we go back to the web interface, if we go ahead and refresh that, it will load directly into the Pi hole itself. So great, now I've got a fresh installation of Pi hole on my system. As I've said before, though, I've been taking backups of my uh, block lists and settings for the last several months, and therefore I don't want to start completely from scratch. I want to be able to restore one of those backups. So to do that, I can go ahead and hit the settings option on the left hand side, and then there'll be the option for teleporter on the top right hand side. And then that's going to give me the option to choose a file. And that file is going to be available here on my desktop. And I'm going to hit open there. 
And then it's going to ask me what exactly I want to restore. So do I want to restore all my whitelists, blacklists, adlists, etc., etc.? Yes, I do want to do all of that. And whether or not I want to clear the existing data. There's no data on this installation, so I'm going to go ahead and hit restore. And then it's going to think for a couple of minutes, and it's eventually going to come back and tell me that it's restored all of its settings. And that looks like it's succeeded. So if we go back and look at the PyHole interface itself, we can go into my whitelists and my blacklists, and we'll see that there are some, there is some data there. So that's the data that I've had to store in the past. Now what this doesn't do is restore all of the settings of the PyHole. This interface is not set the way that I had it set, and there's a few other options there as well that aren't restored. So it's not the most effective way to take backups of your PyHole, but what we're going to do is take a look at how to take better backups of your entire Raspberry Pi in a future video. That's it for now, guys. As always, if I can get you to do the YouTube dance, which is to like, comment, and subscribe, that tells YouTube that the information in the video was particularly useful and helps push it out to other people who might be interested and really helps the channel out. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.